Hey everyone, this is Brad Westfall coming to you with another video about CSS and I want to talk to you today about what's called box sizing. And so uh, this is something that's not you know extremely new, but it is something that um, a lot of web developers might not know about, so I wanted to mention it. I was actually just talking uh, yesterday with a friend of mine who is a web developer that uh, I respect and he wasn't using uh, box sizing and and wasn't quite sure exactly how to use it uh, to his advantage and so I was I was helping him out and then that's when I realized that maybe this would be a good video to make so you know sometimes us web developers and and I'm definitely guilty of this uh, sometimes we get in the habit of you know forming our ways of doing things and then kind of you know forgetting to go back and, and look at some of the the new technologies that are out that might be um, might be better so um, myself and a lot of web developers uh, we had to get around some of the um, the browsers weird lack of support for some stuff and so we had to do some some tricks in the past to uh, accomplish a few things and now we don't have to do as many tricks because of box sizing so that's what I wanted to talk to you about so we're gonna talk about box sizing a little bit more towards the end but at first I want to talk to you about the reason why box sizing exists in the first place. So what we're going to talk about is what I have here on the screen and, and I, um, I have this div tag here, the thing that's blue and I have it to be 200 pixels wide. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. But even though it's gigantic on my screen now, um, it is you know 200 pixels uh, wide. It's just zoomed in. So we're going to go and look at the DOM here. So you can check out the HTML and, and you can see what we have. Pretty simple, just a div tag with a few anchors. And then the div tag uh, is set to be 200 pixels wide. And I just want to give it a minimum height of 400 pixels and um, background color blue. The anchors are display blocks so that they show up each on their own line. And of course we need to be able to see the, the anchors a little bit better so I have them you know, as a different color. So that's what we have. That's kind of our, our starting point. But what I want you to see is you know, what happens when I decide that those, those links are, they're touching the edge of the blue. So I want to bring them away from it. I still want this blue uh, div tag to be 200 pixels wide, but I want the, the links to be not touching. So I guess you might say we have a couple options. We can either add padding to this div tag or we can add margin to uh, the anchors, right? So if we go in and uh, add padding, just so you see what happens, we'll add something obnoxious like 40 pixels, just to really illustrate the point. So we'll go in here and hit refresh, and yes, uh, these are now 40 pixels away from the edge, but what you probably noticed is that the blue div tag is no longer 200 pixels wide. And uh, this goes uh, this goes with one of my uh, older videos where I was saying you should never give something a width and give it padding or margin or borders at the same time. Like if you give something padding, margin, or borders, and you give it width, you're going to get these undesirable results of of the browser basically adding up all those things. It doesn't make the blue div tag a 200 pixels wide all the time and then factor those things on the inside of it. It factors those things on the outside, basically resulting in making the div tag wider than 200 pixels. And if I added a, a border to this, it would be um, even even wider. So let's show you that. We'll go ahead and add a border of 20 pixels. Okay, and it got even wider. So we're gonna take this away for just a second here. <clears throat> but you know that's how the box model works. And, and I found this uh, really cool picture that kind of shows uh, what I'm talking about. So when you give something a width, like our div tag, 200 pixels, you're actually giving every, every box, every div tag, every anchor, every span tag, every paragraph tag is a box, but it's a box that has several layers. And one of those layers is called the content layer. It's the innermost layer. When you give something a width, you're applying it to the content layer, and that's this, this white box right here. So if I give something 200 pixels wide, that's this white box. And then if you add padding to it, that's kind of this uh, light blue 
thing that you see around it. And then the, the green thing that you see around that is the border. That is how the box model works. It takes your width and it adds the padding and it adds the border. So that goes to my, my old uh, rule of never you know, having padding and margin and borders mixed in with widths. It just, it just doesn't work out. So um, we could do something else. Let's go to in here and let's take away the, uh, the padding on this guy. Oops, oops. Let's get rid of all this. And let's go down here to the uh, to the anchors. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you you know what I would do in the past, which is having a another element right here. Okay, so this is what I would have done in the past if I wanted to make uh, something that I can I can depend on it being 200 pixels wide, but I also wanted it to have uh, padding and, and border and margin, I would do two div tags like this nested within each other. And then I would put all the stuff inside of there like that. So if we go and we, let's just for CSS purposes, let's just call this, um, we're going to call that nav so that we can address these separately. And then we can say div nav div. And we can say that this is going to have a, I don't know, we'll give this padding of 40 pixels. Go in here and hit refresh. Okay, so now that inner div, which doesn't have a defined width, its width is set to be, it's going to go as wide as its container, which is the outer div, the blue div. But because it doesn't have a specifically defined width, we can give it padding and it's not going to stretch anything out. So this is how I would have solved uh, this in the past. And this is actually a, um, a, a pretty good trick. I mean, we can also, you can also do margin in this case. And that would basically, you know, do the same thing. Let's give this inner div a, a color. So let's give it a color of, um, how about green? And we're going to go back to padding here. Okay, so refresh. Nope, didn't work. Oh, duh. Okay, refresh, and we get something like that. Okay, so the you know the inner div tag has padding. If we go out here, we can say that this will be margin instead, and it does something like that. But notice how it did something weird. It, it also pushed down the um, the outer div tag. You know, look at this this huge space that's right here that wasn't there before. And this is another uh, box model uh, issue. And uh, this, well, I don't know if it's an issue. This is, this is supposed to be in the spec. It's just that it causes us a problem sometimes in this case. And so, you know, we could do padding like you saw before and that didn't cause any problems. But then if we do margin, you know, maybe we want to do margin for some design reasons. Um, you know, maybe we want to have like a border around this that's different from the border over here or, or whatever. Um, so using margin like this, it, it pushes this guy down. And that's because in CSS, in the box model, there's a rule that says that if, a, if the first child of a container, this, this uh, inner div tag is the first child, if it has a top margin, that margin doesn't separate that first child from its container. It actually gets applied to the outer container. Kind of a weird thing. If you want to go back and look at one of my videos, I can explain this in more detail. Uh, there are some little things you could do to, uh, to get around it. For instance, you can go to the, uh, the outer container and you can say, you can give, if it has any sort of padding, then you can say padding one pixel. And that rule that I just said, if the, if the inner div tag has a top margin, and I'm sorry, if the first child div tag, which is this guy, has a top margin, it actually gets applied to the parent. That doesn't count if the parent has a padding. So we'll go over here, we'll hit refresh. Okay, so now it's what we expect. But we just added a padding of one pixel to the, uh, to the parent, which means it's not 200 pixels wide anymore. It's 202 pixels wide because of the left and the right one pixel. Okay, so 
let's let's not do this with a padding. We could also add a a border if we need a border. Even if we don't want there to be a visible border and we wanted the border to be the same color, we can say uh, border, you know, one pixel solid blue. So now it's not a, a visible border, but it is there. So this actually, uh, if I hit refresh, same thing. It uh, same thing as the padding. It makes it so that that weird top margin that's called collapsing margins by the way it makes it so that that the green you know doesn't uh top margin doesn't get applied to the parent but again we just added a border to this blue div tag so it's uh it's going to be 202 pixels wide now so are there any things we can do to this parent div tag that aren't border and aren't padding that aren't going to mess with our 200 pixels uh we can say overflow auto or overflow hidden but uh, this gets into some more advanced topics. Yeah, this solves the problem. Refresh, okay, so now the blue is 200 pixels wide. Yes, this solves the problem, but overflow hidden and overflow auto can cause other problems um, in the future. So if we take that away, we're back back to this. Okay, so it's like, it's like we're running out of options here. You know, what do we do? We want this thing to be, uh, the green to be closer to the middle. So, you know, adding, adding margin, is obviously causing all these collapsing margin issues. Let's go back to padding. Okay, so padding made the, the green anchors closer to the middle, but there might be a reason why I don't wanna use padding on this, this div tag. Maybe I don't want it to go from edge to edge of the 200 pixel wide you know, blue div tag. You know, like maybe I want it to, uh, maybe this is like a little you know, module that has like rounded corners that's kind of, you know, just inside of the, the, the blue uh, 200 pixel wide, you know, uh, container. So, you know, what do we do? We're kind of running out of options here. So um, there's this thing called box sizing, you know, the reason why we're making this video. So let's go up here and actually we're gonna take this, remember this is kind of where we started was adding this padding right here. Okay, so now we're back to adding the padding to the container, the blue, but that stretches it out. It's 200 pixels plus 40 on the left, 40 on the right. Okay, so now there's this cool thing called box sizing. And one of the values that you have is called border box. And notice that it's not even highlighting this uh, with my my uh, my colors because even Sublime uh, Text 2 isn't quite sure uh, what this is. Uh, so I mean, you know, it is it is a new a new tool, it's a new trick, but um, it's it's not terribly new. I mean, it's it's probably like I think like two or three years old, but it's starting to get a lot of ground. So let's see what that does by saying box sizing border box with our padding. We go in here, we hit refresh, and look at that, our um, Let's open up Chrome Developer Tools. Our 200 pixel wide container div tag is still 200 pixels wide, even though it has padding involved. Let's go and um, let's see, make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, I have this obnoxious black menu bar thing right here, which I don't even know where that came from. This is kind of a new laptop. So I have to make this bigger so I can click on the inspector here. So um, we're going to go in here and I want you to see that I can change the padding to be bigger or smaller and notice that it's changing the uh, the inside of the box and not the outside of the box okay we can even go and make a border of remember that uh, what was it like 20 pixels solid orange right so again, we can have a border inside of here and no matter what border we have, no matter what padding we have, this thing is going to be 200 pixels wide. Okay. So this leaves us, uh, you know, with our green tag, which we can do any styles we want to that. Um, and it's not touching the edge of the blue. So that's, uh, that's pretty much, uh, box sizing in a nutshell. Um, it really helps, um, you know, fix a lot of issues. So, I mean, technically we could, you know, you can make an argument that box sizing helps us have less DOM elements because remember I had the, uh, remember I had this guy right here, this, this div tag. 
uh, we don't need that anymore. We can just go like this. Save that. We don't need this. Save that. Okay, refresh. And so now we have just a div tag with anchors and padding. So that padding would normally add more, but now it doesn't. Box sizing, it's awesome. Let me also show you something else real quick here on the web. If you do a search for box sizing, before we get to that, look at this graphic. This graphic is, uh, this is from CSS Tricks, uh, Chris Coyer, who's a really uh, well-known CSS guru. Uh, he explains uh, with this graphic what box sizing is doing. You can see that, um, you know, when you give this bottom box a width of 200 pixels, it's padding the light blue and the, and the border, the green, they are all gonna add up to 200 pixels and that's what I just showed you. So if you do a search on uh, Google for box sizing, um, Paul Irish's uh, page is one of the first ones that comes up and um, I think it's like the second result that comes up and he's actually talking about a CSS uh, reset where you say everything in your entire design should have box sizing border box and he's trying to make a good argument for that and actually you can see he's uh, kind of borrowing Chris's uh, image over here and so um, yes actually he's talking about almost my same example you know what if you have something that's a width of 200 pixels wide yada yada I didn't even I haven't even really read this article fully I just I just stumbled upon it and this is this is the main thing that you know the main reason why I wanted to show it to you is is because it's got this uh, you know it's got this reset and I thought that was really interesting that box sizing to some people like Paul Irish and I know uh, others that do this too box sizing is so important they don't want to deal with adding up padding, paddings and, and borders and, and widths and all that kind of stuff it's so important that people are starting to include it into their reset for everything uh, kind of in the same way that um, at least myself I take away the padding and margin for everything in my reset and a lot of people do that so anyways that's box sizing hope you enjoyed it uh, see you next time thanks